Happy spring break, everybody. You know, nothing says spring break to us quite like a craft brewery. Cold, crisp craft beer, it's right up our alley. And we have a place we've been dying to take you guys. Let's check it out. Welcome to Ogopogo Brewing. So from what I understand, the beers here are all named after or inspired by like mythical or legendary creatures. And they're so cool. They're, there's so many options to choose from. So we definitely wanted to grab a flight. So we got our flight here and we wanted to kind of try several different styles just to kind of get an all around idea of what Ogopogo is all about. So I know we got a sour, a pale ale, we got that original Boo Man, um, that Whit Beer. What was the other one we got, Isaac? The got La Llorona. La Llorona, we had to try that because, you know, La Llorona is like a spooky kind of tale, a spooky story and... Spooky scary. That had me kind of curious about what the La Llorona beer would be like. And, and that's always just something that's great to do if you show up to a place that has tons of beers and you want to try more than one or two, because like these craft beers, they got some, they got some alcohol. <laughs> And while we love to have a good time, for me, I tap out after a couple. So if you get little tastes, you can try a bunch of them. I have become a huge fan of sours. They're so interesting. And of course, if you like a sour flavor, this is for you. This is the El Cibone. Am I saying that right, Isaac? I think it's El Silbone. Silbone? This is the El Silbone. This is a sour. Let's go for it. Spring break. So lots of these sours, yeah, they definitely have like a featured fruit or two usually. This is passion fruit and you can absolutely taste it. Kind of does taste like vacation. This is definitely a spring break beer. I think there's vanilla in there too. Oh yeah, there's a smoothness. Isaac, try this. Oh wow. Get the vanilla. That's good. That tastes like, oh, with the vanilla in there, it has almost like a sour, kind of like a sour pastry quality to it. Yeah. You know, like a flaky pastry with like some guava or something in the middle like they do around here. Don't they say something about like a pastry in the description? I think you can see from here, I think it says pastry sour. Mm. So that makes sense. Yeah, they It has it. some serious funk to it though, too. Yeah. So Ogopogo was founded in 2018. This is actually San Gabriel's first ever craft brewery. And the owners have an incredible story, an incredible craft background. And just the next year in 2019, their beer won a silver medal at the Great American Beer Fest, the Boo Man. It's a Belgian wit beer. It's a very refreshing and delicious Belgian wit beer. So it's made with wheat, but it's light. It's phenomenal. A winner to you? Yeah, this is really good. This is like really crushable on a warm, sunny day like we have today. It's spring break. It's beer o'clock. These must be the founders. I think I like them already. They're cool. The moment I saw they had La Llorona on the menu, I had to have it. Like I said, this, it's a crazy story. So I wanted to know what it was like. And apparently it's a Mexican lager, which makes sense because the La Llorona tale comes from Mexican folklore. Let's give it a taste. Oh, wow. It might be that classic Mexican lager, but it's not basic. It's delicious. It's got great flavor. And uh, this definitely, you know it goes with tacos. This would be perfect with some fresh tacos. Mm. This is a uh, uber crushable. This is delicious. Coming in at number four of our flight is a pale ale. It's the Nyx pale ale. Now I'm not familiar with the tale of whatever the Nyx is, whatever creature it is, but uh, I'll have to look that up. But I am a huge fan and very familiar with pale ales. That's my go-to at a craft brewery. I love to get a crisp pale ale. Let's see what theirs is like. That is delicious. That's one of the most delicious pale ales I've ever had in my life. And trust me, I've had quite a few. This is super aromatic. And it's got a little bit of that kind of fresh hop flavor, but it's not going to overpower you. It's, uh, it's drinkable. I mean, this is tasty, but I might have to get a full size of this puppy because I'm a big fan. So besides our flight, I also knew that I wanted to just have a pint to sip on, and I got a pint of their West Coast style IPA. This is called 
Becky. Let's give it a taste. You know, that's good, but that's not what I was expecting. Wow, interesting. This has a lot of like really tropical flavors, like passion fruit, guava, almost like melon and banana in there too, which I know is all coming from the different hops. These are using a lot of like new hop varietals, but it has a really crisp, clean, bitter finish. So it almost like has those like juicy IPA flavors, but instead of having a sweet finish that you get from a juicy IPA, this has a bitter finish. So I wasn't expecting this. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Because when I think of a West Coast IPA, I think of like a Stone or a Lagunitas or something that has a little bit more of like a piney flavor or grassy flavor with a little bit more of a bitter kick to it. This is like really good because it's like fruity and tropical, like a juicy, but it's bitter like a West Coast. I like it, it's really nice. It sounds like spring break to me. Yeah, it's really good. Sometimes the hazies and the juicies get a little bit too like syrupy sweet for me. Like they almost taste like there's literal juice in them. And uh, I, need, I need my beer to just be a little bit bitter in there. So this is really good. I would definitely recommend this. Okay, their beer's delicious, no doubt about it. But one thing that's really cool is when you come here, if you're sitting inside, you're sitting right in their brewing room in their huge warehouse. Warehouse. I mean, I can literally hear the beer in these tanks next to me bubbling, um, going through the system. You know, things are fermenting, boiling, mashing. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. It's really fun to feel like you're coming to taste this super fresh product straight out of the tank. One of the most exciting things about being here is we actually just moved into a house that's less than a mile from this place. And this is one of the better breweries we've been to in the whole area. And to know that we could literally walk here is pretty exciting. Maybe a good idea too, because I think we're gonna really enjoy ourselves here. So walking might be, walking might be good. So let's take a walk outside. So not only do they have a really nice inside tasting room, but they have this really beautiful patio. There's a tented section. So if the sun is a little too bright or if it's raining, you can be under the tent. There's also space heaters and a really fun area to hang out with friends. It feels pretty big. Yeah, this is huge. You could definitely have a huge get together of friends. I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 people could easily fit out here. It's a good spot. And from their social media, I've noticed they have pretty frequent like food trucks that show up. Some of them look actually really good. We're gonna have to come back for that. I'm feeling so grateful because we're on spring break right now. We're both teachers. Isaac teaches in school. I teach private music lessons. And uh, because we just made this big move into this house, it took a lot out of us. And it was also kind of pricey. You know, so we weren't in a position to like travel for spring break, but I just feel so grateful to live in a place that is a vacation destination that just has so much to do, so many wonderful things to experience that so much to do, so much to see. We really genuinely can feel like we're on vacation where we live and places like this make it all the better. The fact that we could practically walk to this place, it's just really cool. And I, I'm just so glad we live here, we moved here. I'd say it's working out. So. If you are new around here and this is your first time watching one of our videos, we love exploring Los Angeles and all the surrounding areas. We like going to theme parks, going to breweries, taco trucks, all those great things that make life here fun. And if you want, it, if you want in on that, if you want to follow along with us, hit the subscribe button. Join the family. Yeah. We have fun around here. We know we've only lived here a year and a half, less than two years, um, and we're still learning what's cool, what's good. If you know of a great brewery in the LA area that we need to check it out, put it in the comments below. We wanna hear from you, and we'll try to hit it next. This feels like spring break to me. Craft beer, sunshine, it's all I need. So I know that there's all this like mythical folklore as the inspiration for the beers, but I think the Ogopogo is its own folklore. Like, is, is it a creature? Is it like the Loch Ness Monster or something? Better look it up. Yes, okay. It's from Canadian folklore. The Ogopogo is a lake monster said to inhabit Okanagan Lake. We've been there, Okanagan Lake in British Columbia. Wow, this is really crazy. So we got married almost, what, 14 years ago? We've been married almost 14 years, we're old. It's been, it's been 14 years. 14 long years. It's been 84 years. Almost 14 years ago, us two young 20-somethings, newlyweds, we wanted to go on a fun 
but uh, chill honeymoon. Well, and we had no money. <laughs> no money. We, had, <laughs> we needed a road trip somewhere. We needed something uh, on our little 20-something budget. So we went up to the Okanagan Valley, which is actually known as an amazing wine region. So we went up and stayed at like a cool hotel in the Okanagan Valley and went to all these great wineries. They're known for mostly for white wines, but apparently, apparently, Apparently the Ogopogo is almost like a Loch Ness, like lake monster from that region. So we got the Boo Man, um, Scary Man, Boo Man, Boo, La Llorona, which is like, we know that from Mexican folklore. We got the Nix, I'm gonna have to Google that. We got the El Silbon, I'm gonna also have to Google that. Oh, we got the Becky. I wonder if that's like a story or like Becky? a person that works here. But it's spelled B-H-E-K-I. You can Google it, it's worth a Google. So the Boo Man is the boogeyman. What would we do without Google? Nix Cryptid. Ah, Nixie. These are like shapeshifters in oh. German mythology. Okay, cool. All right, that's that. Okay, so Becky is, says here, good old Wikipedia, it says is the name given to a frog that symbolizes the sun on the horizon in Sanskrit legend. So, legendary creature, Becky, okay, West Coast, sun. Oh, El Silbon is a Colombian legend about the lost soul. So, okay, cool. I feel like all these kind of creatures and cryptids and stuff that inspire these names for Ogopogo Brewing are really cool. It's so nice when like a brewery, like a craft brewery like this goes like one step farther with their creativity and like comes up with like a concept. Yeah. Because like it can like mutually like inspire like the, the story, the beer, the beer, the story. It's yeah, because you'd be like, I want to make a beer for the spooky ghost or I want to make a beer for this like frog that symbolizes the sun. Yeah, it's like La Llorona. It's like Mexican lager. That Nick's Pale is so good. I had to get the pint. No regrets. No, re break. no regrets. No regrets. Spring break. Well, it's been a total blast checking out Ogopogo. We've loved every beer we tried. We can't wait to come back and try more. That'll be easy to do because we live really just around the corner from this place. But friends, until we see you here next time, we just want to say cheers. cheers. <laughs> Welcome to Ogopogo. <laughs> Welcome to Ogopogo. It's a very refreshing. It's a very. Really